Hey everybody, and welcome. In this video I'm just going to do a very quick retouch on this photograph. This is one I took quite a while, not a long time ago. But I uh, just want to edit it really, and just show you guys the process. So all I've done is in Lightroom is I've selected the image I want to edit, and then in the develop module I've dropped the highlights down, the shadows up, and then I've added a little bit of clarity, and that's just so that I can see more detail when I'm editing. So the next thing to do is right click, go to edit in and open as a smart object in Photoshop and then the rest of the work we carry out will be in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop and as you can see we've got a bit of work to do. First thing we really want to focus on is just fixing any dimensions where the character or the model sorry is in shot um, sometimes the camera really does add 10 pounds so we just need to straighten out any of those lumps and bumps that we might have picked up so all we're going to do is we're going to go into our filter and we're going to go into the liquify tool and then give that a moment to start up now as you can see i've got my brush pressure set to two anything more than that and you're going to start moving way too many pixels at any given time and we don't really want that so as you can see the pose that she's in has given her a little bit of a bump just here where the swimsuit is being pulled tight against the skin which is not ideal and also where her arm is because we can't see an air gap down the side there it makes the arm look like it's fatter than it really is so this is the first thing that I'm going to correct. I'm actually just going to pull in that arm ever so slightly just so that it doesn't create quite such a dimension that we are getting and then with regards to this bump here I'm just going to pull that across ever so slightly it's not got to be a huge change it's just got to be enough to smooth out that bump that's being created by the swimsuit pulling against the cloth so that you can see the swimsuit is resting on the skin and there's no tension there uh, because that is obviously another thing that creates the illusion of the model being bigger than she really is and we don't really want that so we're just going to smarten up that edge there to the best of our ability and just make that look a little bit neater there and then on the shoulder I'm actually going to fix this issue that happens when models stick their arm out too far and it just removes a lot of shape from their arm um, having it too close to the body going to go that makes it look fat having it too far away from the body it does remove some of that muscle tone so we're just going to add some shape back in there really really subtly and we can come down and check out the thighs and again you can see there's that ever so slight bump where the, the top of the boot is pressing against the flesh so we're just going to correct that and we're going to do the same thing just here where she's pulling on her own leg with her hand and it's creating that strange kind of ripple in the skin there cool beans coming up we can see the dress here or the outfit that she's wearing is a little bit rocked up just here in the corner and that's not ideal either so I'm actually going to just in, just going to experiment a little bit of pulling that in it has obviously followed the the flesh or the or her breast all the way around here and then there's this just little bit here that flares out which just makes the outfit look bad so we're just going to Try and flatten that out a little bit to make it look like it's meant to be that way. To make it look like it is actually more figure hugging around there than it is. And it's just the pose that she's in where she's crunched her hip um, and pushed her shoulder down. It's created a lot of excess fabric on this side. And we don't want to remove that all completely because we want the viewer, the person looking at the picture, to believe the image. Um, but yeah, this extra bit around the top of the breast does make the... Uh, outfit look a bit naff so we're just gonna without changing the dimensions of her body we're just going to fix this issue with the outfit standing too far away from the skin and it is a little bit of a push and pull process there is no doubt about that but again we don't we aren't changing the shape of her body we're trying to be as ethical as possible in the way that we do this we just want this excess uh, fabric to disappear, basically. So that's what we're working on. 
And there's other ways we could have done this. We could have used a clone stamp tool to just push some hair over the top of it or something like that. But again, we try and move pixels around rather than create and destroy them in the initial phase because this is only the first step of the edit. And to me, that already looks quite a bit better. I can try coming right in close. I do apologize for that immediate boob close up. And I can try and use the pinch tool as well. Or the pucker tool as it's called. And we've already got this on a low pressure and we can just dab that around there just to try and thin out that edge a little bit. Um, it, again, this is quite an aggressive brush as you can see. I just barely touched that and it's already done that. So we can actually adjust the size and the density and the rate. We can drop that right down and then hopefully that will help us and just and if you don't like it just control Z that's the easiest way of doing it adjust your tool properties to oh that last one was exactly where I wanted to be right cool that's it happy with that so we're going to go back to our smudge tool for our forward push tool before we do anything we regret come back out and we can just look at that and as you can see now it's created a weird kind of wear off maybe pulled the breast a little bit too far across so we can just create a slightly larger brush and just push that back in so that it actually looks like it's meant to be there. I think I might have accidentally made the boob a square shape. So we just smooth out that shape there. There we go. That looks much more natural. Perfect. And then up on the face, if we come in a little bit closer, I'm just going to just ever so slightly tidy up this jawline where the angle that I'm shooting from just takes out some of that. This one has got a very angular jaw. Um, we don't want to diminish that because that's one of her, you know, one of her main features. But we're just going to literally a couple of tiny couple of pixels of change there. Job done. So now if we go back to Control Zero, I'm happy with that. So we can hit OK. There we go. Nice, that's sorted that bit out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the skin softening detail. So I'm just going to create a couple of copies of this layer. Control Shift Alt E. That doesn't work. We just go to create a new layer there and then do Control Shift Alt E and then Control J. So we've copied this layer twice. We're going to put both of those into a folder and we can just call this uh, skin softening like that. Open that folder back up, hide this layer, and take this layer. We're going to go to filter and we're going to go to noise medium. And then we're just going to, I'm going to make this probably in the reason about 12 because she is far away from the camera. So we're going to stick with that. I'm just going to create another layer over the top of that. Select a brush and go with, yeah, those opacity and flow settings are about right. And then I'm simply going to use the Alt key to select a color in a certain area that I like. So that color down there. And then I'm just painting back, basically adding that color over the top. And I'm just trying to, any really obvious rapid changes in color, I'm just softening them out to make it look like the transitions in the shapes of the, of the, the body, as well as the discolorations. And if you don't like anything again, you can always bring the opacity down a bit more. We're just softening out basically the contours of the body. So there's where you can see this where she's got um, that natural shape across there. Nothing wrong with that at all. Just want to soften it out a little bit. So I'm just going to work on the whole face as a one. And again, if you find yourself adding too much color, all right, bring the opacity down. And again, you're not trying to change the shape of the model's body. You're just smoothing out the contours a little bit and it is very easy to go too far sometimes with this so you might end up having to do this step once twice three times now we don't want to lose this highlight down the side of her face which is created by the lighting in the scene so I'm just gonna make sure that we keep that in place and then add the contours after the fact there and again, we've got that slight highlight there, which is great. Absolutely no, uh, nothing wrong with that, but we just want to smooth it out a little bit. And just keep 
those shapes nice and soft. And then we can come back to this side and just smooth out that side a little bit more again. I don't like using a small brush for this. I prefer using large brush strokes, but on the face it's very difficult because you can't always get the brush stroke size that you're after in that area. So you just have to be a little bit more subtle. And then we can come back to a slightly bigger brush when it comes to the cheekbones, pick a nice highlight color. Just add that there. That there. And remember, you can't really lose this bit of shadow there because that's a part of the effect of the image. So you just got to be really got, got to compromise, to be honest. And then some of the lighting around the forehead, nothing wrong with it. Just trying to soften out that shadow so that it's not quite so bad. This is a wig. You can tell it's a wig at the moment with the shadow. We're just trying to soften that out a little bit so that it looks a little bit more natural. Happy days, and then come down to the neck, and again just softening up those contours a little bit. We don't want to hide the fact that this model has got a stronger set of features because that, that suits the pose and the, the overall effect. You kind of got a bit of a sort of a 1960s sci-fi heroine kind of thing going on, which is great, absolutely perfect, but we just need to soften up some of those a little bit. Around the bicep, we can add a little bit more tone, a little bit more definition by just shifting some of those highlights and shadows a little bit. Smart. This area is always going to be a problem because of the tattoos. There's no getting away from that. Um, the beauty of tattoos is they do hide some of the skin's imperfections, so you shouldn't have to do too much messing around. But Obviously, you do also have to be careful you don't actually paint over one of them because that will create an unwanted artifact on the image. So we just bring in the tone of this muscle here, the hip flexors. Just adding some of that detail across, just basically bringing that muscle tone down the leg a little bit more. And then we can use same brush just to kind of even out some of that skin tone that's happening where you can see the vascularity in the model's uh, muscles and the legs okay so looking pretty good go control zero again overall pretty happy with that might need to do a little bit more work on the face on the right hand side or the model's left hand side just here we can still see this slight change in tone there. I think we just need to smooth that out a little bit more, bring this highlight a little bit further forward. Again, total balancing act of just keeping the model's features. Might have to add a little bit of shadow under the lips there. to zero there all right that's better so now we've done that what we can do is we can select this layer turn it back on go to image apply image and then we're going to select layer one which is the one that we uh, blurred i'm going to change this to subtract which is down the bottom here scale to offset one two eight boom done and we're going to change this to linear light there we go so we've got our detail back but with the new contours that we've added there's still some work to do there so now we're going to control j copy that layer and we're going to hold down alt between the two thumbnails and we're going to just click there and then that links the two layers together and then we just switch the top one to normal and that's good now we can select our healing brush tool and we can make sure that it's selected current layer only and then we can come in and we can fix any of those imperfections prime example being this set of ruffles fabric just here we can actually fix that and just get rid of it or smooth it out at the very least and if we don't like the effect we can just 
change the area that we're selecting our texture from. Again, this is not a major feature of the image, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference if it looks a little bit out, but we do want to just take out those contours. And if, if I'm unhappy with the effect that I'm getting there, all I can do is turn this off. This one, sorry, come back to this layer with my brush tool. There's a bit of a weird light artifact there, so I can just paint over that. I want it to really kind of blend in with the rest of the area around it so that it looks a little bit more natural. So that's precisely what I'm going to do. Just paint over that area there. Like so. And it's just, there are some hard lines in the lighting, but we want it to just blend a little bit nicely. And then we can just stick that on, see how that looks. Looking better. Yeah, that looks much better. Then we can come back to this layer and we can see how that looks from a distance. That looks much better. Cool beans. Right, so realistically, this technique can be used to work on the textures and the fabrics across the, the whole of the, of the model. But realistically, we just want to use this to fix any odd blemishes. Some of these are going to be light scratches that we might have to go to the previous layer and look at. And we can change our opacity on this because we're using the healing brush tool. So need to change our opacity back up to 100 so that we're actually dealing with these in that layer. It turns out that I'm actually painting over this with a paintbrush, so that would probably need to be a few steps back. And then come pick up the actual tool we're supposed to be using. Silly mistake. There we go, that's better. Just means we can paint out some of these scratches in the outfit. They do happen. It's just the nature of the beast. No matter how professional your photo shoot, no matter how carefully you work on everything, makeup, hair, styling before the shoot and during the shoot, no matter how anal you are about making sure that every hair is perfect at the time of the shoot, there's always, always, always going to need to be a little bit of tidying up done afterwards. Um, there are, yes, there are purists out there who absolutely refuse to do any touching up of their images. Um, fine, you know, if you want to put out a half-baked product, absolutely fine. Do what you got to do. But to me, it makes absolutely no sense to not use every tool at your disposal to get the best possible image like the people who refuse to use autofocus because they say that it's cheating well well done bully for you um personally to me if i can get a perfectly focused image in a fraction of a second then i'm gonna do it i like to manual focus because sometimes i don't necessarily want to focus on what the camera is grabbing but most of the time to do that and keep that line there most of the time the the camera does a pretty damn good job of grabbing the bit of what i want it to focus on so sometimes this process is a lot more involved say if the model had really un uneven skin texture then it would be a case of having to go through and change that but this model has got a textured skin but it's not bad. It's, you know, it's just a, you know, a normal, a person of that age has that, that skin texture. And that to me is again, one of the, one of the models positives traits rather than something that I see as a negative. So there we go. We've tidied up a few blemishes. We've fixed this weird shape around there and we've got the, skin texture to be even so now we can change 
to another set of tools. I'm just going to create a new folder. And in that folder, I'm going to create a new layer. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channel. So I'm going to shift or control click on the thumbnail of the RGB channel and come back into layers. And I'm going to create a curves layer. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of contrast, adjusting the properties of this layer like so might have to just drag up the come here there we go just so i can see the whole the whole histogram there cool right happy with that now i'm going to create another one another curves layer there and this time i'm going to use the uh, selector tool i'm going to find one of the skin's normal highlights i'm not bothered about the one down the side of the body that's meant to be slightly blown out I'm just going to grab the forehead. That's always a good uh, positive point. Yeah, we, just got, we don't want to go too mad. Just drag it up a smidge. Tiny little fraction. Then we find a shadow, an area of shadow, which that, that seems to be pretty good. And we can drag that down. Again, just adding some contrast to the image. And if I think I've added too much, I can always just bring down the opacity of that ever so slightly. Cool beans, cool beans. And I think maybe I should just reduce the opacity of this layer a bit as well. There we go. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two new layers, two two new curves layers. One is going to be the shadows. I'm going to control I to invert the layer mask on that one. And I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this one highlights. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Now I'm just going to go through the image and add shadows and highlights where I want them to be. So I'm going to change to the brush tool. I'm going to bring the opacity right down to about 15%. 12, 15, 16 is good enough. Blow down to about 50%. Coming in. And then I'm just going to start with the face. I'm just going to add in some shadows where I want them to be. Just under the hair over here. Check that we're actually using white and not black. So that we're actually adding rather than doing nothing. I'm literally just adding some new contours now. Or deepening the contours that already exist where I want them to be deeper. So this sort of shadow down the side of the face here I quite like because it adds depth. So I'm going to add to that. Contouring on this side again I like. A bit around the hair just pops the hair a little bit. thinking I can probably deepen that ellipse a little bit as well. I'll probably go for a little bit here as well around the top of the eye where she's winking slightly in this image. I don't really want to mess with this eye too much because I want that to sort of have a much more natural looking appearance. putting a lot of focus on the hair because the hair is is quite a bright and colorful feature in this image so it's, it's almost impossible to ignore it so the best thing to do is to give it a little bit of attention otherwise you'll end up with a really weird looking image where the body looks amazing the face looks amazing and the hair looks kind of dead so just where you find shapes add those shadows under it just make that hair pop and then you really can't ignore the fact that the model is is well um, endowed, shall we say. So we have to, you can't just focus on one area. You have to add those shadows and details to every area of the body that is required. Otherwise you end up almost messing up the proportions of the model's body. So. You know, without putting too fine a detail on it, you do have to focus on the breasts and the crotch as well as the face. And because of the uh, outfit material, sometimes there is a little bit of extra work that you're going to have to do in the areas because it's highly reflective. It, it lights really, really easily. So. You, way whereas if, it's, if this were just a cloth outfit or a piece of lingerie you probably wouldn't have to work on adjusting the shadows quite so much 
in this case you might have to do several passes in order to remove some of those contours because it, as well as being incredibly figure hugging and showing off the model's physique it also shows every little bulge and crevice which we don't necessarily want so for me what I might have to do is come back at this afterwards with a much darker brush or the clone stamp tool just to soften up some of this detail around here but while we're in the shadows mode we can continue to add shadows down in this area like that and then we can come back to the highlights and we can actually bring some of that back in and, and the cool thing with using the um, curves layer is that you can actually paint over the tattoos and it's not going to mess them up so this is where we can add our highlights and shadows to the whole of the body let's get that clavicle to pop a little bit and the sternomasto whatever that muscle is called I forget it's been a long time just pop the chin a little bit a little bit of brightness in that eye soften up this forehead smidge and make that lip pop a little bit more And if we control zero, we can come out and we can see we're getting some pretty cool dramatic lighting effects from doing that. I am going to, I think I am going to do a little bit of work over here. But before I do anything else, what I want to do is adjusting the curves layers like that does have the unwanted effect of adding a slight red shift in the color. So we're going to go into our adjustment layers. We're going to create a hue and saturation layer overall saturation I'm going to bring down by about 10 then in reds same again I'm also going to do it in the greens and that just makes the colors look a little bit more natural again there we go that's much better now I can close down that group and I can create a new layer and I'm going to use the clone stamp tool And I'm going to see if I can't just soften this area up a little bit. So I'm going to get a nice big brush here. And I'm going to just clone that bit. I might bring the opacity down slightly. Just because I want to. And yeah, I'm thinking this color around here is probably the color I want to go for. And that's just removed the bulge from the center of the belly. There are some more artifacts here that I just want to want to. Might have to control Z a few times. If I think the opacity is too high, I can just bring it down and then resample. And we're just dabbing it. We're not going crazy on painting loads and loads of detail here. I'm just softening up the details so that it looks more like um, but she, she, I mean, this model has got a great physique. She has, she is actually um, very much a gym rat. So the fact that the outfit can produce such unflattering um, detail sometimes is a source of great frustration to her as much as anybody else, I'm sure. And then this kind of bulge around the pubic area, again, it's unnecessary. So we can just soften it up. A little bit being careful not to paint over the flesh with these tones and it's just a little bit of a fine tune really just to make sure that it doesn't look completely weird remember that you're painting texture on top of texture so it there is a risk of creating that weird effect now you're looking in that area so you're seeing the adjustments that I've made but to the person who hasn't watched this video and seen this process that's not going to be quite such a problem. Uh, we can always copy and paste more details from other areas of the image if needs be. Go there. If 
or unhappy with any part of the image, we can just tweak it. That's the beauty of using Adobe Photoshop. You're not deleting or destroying pixels, you're just moving them around, creating the creating the illusion. And I, I don't even like to call Photoshop an illusion. If it's done ethically, you're not fooling anybody by by deleting pixels or, or anything like that. You, all you're doing is showing off, showing the model off to at the absolute best. The comment that I always hear about, oh, well, it creates an unhealthy body image. It's like, well, it doesn't. Unfortunately for, for, the, for the people out there who are advocates for canceling this kind of post work, People, do, people with perfect bodies and perfect skin by the standards that are set by the fashion magazines, they do exist. But they're rare, that's why they're coveted, but that's the whole point, that's why gold is valuable, why palladium is incredibly valuable, because it's rare. Doesn't mean that we don't want it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty much sorted out that problem there, pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to control shift up again. And I'm going to do it again with a control J. Turn off this layer here. And this one I'm going to create a bit of a blur. Filter blur. Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to give this one probably a little bit less than that. Something in the region of about 8.8. .8. Looks good. I'm going to leave this one over the top of it. Filter other. I pass in this one I'm going to go with probably the last one was about 8.8 .8, so I'm going to go with about three and let's see what happens there so if I go with a uh, image adjustments desaturate on this top layer let me switch this to soft light and try switching it to linear light see what happens there yeah, linear light works. And then this bottom layer, we can just bring that opacity of that back down a little bit. Yeah, that works. Digging that. Looks pretty good. Giving us that little bit of a glamour glow. Gives it a little bit of an HDR kind of feel. If we wanted to, we could drop this down a little bit and then bring the opacity of this top layer down a little bit as well. And that just gives us a little bit more of an illusion there of it being an HDR gives us that signature look and then all we have to do is save this back into Adobe Lightroom and export it basically thanks very much for watching that guys I hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one but until then take care of yourselves all right bye bye